Hey guys, uh, it's me just popping in real quick before we start the episode. Just wanted to say if you check the description for the episode wherever you're listening and or watching it, you'll see a link to a survey. Um, basically me and the guys have been discussing potentially starting a Patreon, but we can't do it without your support or knowing that we're providing you guys the content that you want. So uh, please take the survey, answer as seriously as possible. The more people that answer and the more data we get, the more we can see what you guys actually want us to do, if you even want us to do it, and if it's even worth it for us or you. So uh, click that link, it's in the description. And uh, let us know what you think and uh, enjoy the episode. Thanks, guys. Bye. You're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by... As always, Stephen Badagadak. And? And G. Thank you. Thank you Feel for better? feasing me. I do. I was like, now they all out of sorts. Now they don't know. I was we we almost skipped the intro to, to catch up everyone in case that was cut. Is that OCD? Does that count as OCD? That you have to do that? I don't have to. It's just I feel like it kind of like... um. It's like a train. <laughs> it's like unstoppable. It gets me like in movement, <laughs> and I can I can keep going. Mm -hmm. You know. Why can't I get away from these fucking puns? <laughs> <laughs> was that a pun? I don't think that was a pun. It was a reference. Uh, okay, reference. I think it was a simile. Sure. Whatever. Wait, no, it's not a simile. <laughs> Whatever. Simile you, is like or as. No, it's not using like or as. Right. No. No, it is using like or as. So it is a simile. Yeah. Okay. I think metaphor. Yes. By uh, using metaphor! metaphor! <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. Don Mark Angelad. How are we, boys? I'm all right. I'm good. Good. What's new with you guys? Oh, a little of this, a little of that. Yeah. Mostly doing dog things lately. Oh, got the dog, dog man. Oh, the Charlie. Dog, the dog man Alcatraz. I like Charlie. Charlie's a good That's boy. That's a new dog. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yeah. Does he sleep with you at night? No. No? No. Got he great in cage. He's yeah. not allowed? No. The cat would lose her mind. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Why? Jealousy? They're not getting along. Really? No. The cat's mean. I have a mean cat. All cats are mean. Yeah, but this one seems particularly mean. Really? <laughs> yeah. What's her issue? Uh, she doesn't like him. She keeps, like, hitting him? No. Anytime he gets anywhere near her, she hisses at him. Uh, you know, I, the cat is, like, having fucking mental breakdowns because uh, I went upstairs in my house. I hadn't been upstairs in a few days. Mm -hmm. You ever do that? Like, just certain parts of your house, you just haven't been there in a little bit? Well, my bedroom's upstairs. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, mine's not. Okay. I have an upstairs that's just like- Use it like a long I have, I have like an office shit, up yeah. there where, my, where I keep my CDs. Right. All right? So I go upstairs, first time in a few days, and there's a bunch of fucking cat shit on the floor up there. Now, the cat has a litter box and has never not shit in the litter box, but apparently because there's a dog in the house now, she feels the need to go upstairs and shit in my office. Mark wow. territory, I guess. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> That's so funny. It wasn't funny. I didn't like it at all. Was it old cat shit? It had been there for days, probably. Oh, probably wow. Two days. It was three piles. Wow. Three piles of shit. Oh, wow. And it wasn't the dog. It wasn't the dog, because the dog, didn't at the time, didn't know how to go upstairs. Okay, oh, okay. so it definitely oh, wasn't yeah. the dog. Do you think she was trying to frame the dog? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, That's my awesome. life has revolves around picking up shit now. I yep, pick up I've shit all day. That's what I do. Yep. I'm a shit picker-upper. Wait. Eventually, the dog yeah. will grow up and not have to. Uh... Well, he's pretty good. Believe it or not, he's pretty good. I still got to pick up the shit outside. You know, you put him on the leash, That's you're true. picking up shit. Yeah. I mean, you could just leave it on your neighbor's property and walk away. See, I don't do that. I'm not an animal. But right. uh, the shit's got to be picked up. Amazon makes a wonderful Why shit. Why do you pick get vapor bag. rise? Now, that is a film. Can we talk about what he used to do? What did he used to do? With his, with his uh, dog walking habits? What do you do? Do you remember? Oh, is that when he filled a sewer full of uh -huh. dog shit? Uh huh. Do you remember that? Yeah, you're a fucking maniac. Why? You're, you're a psychopath. You are like you have no clue what that. Does. That's like toxic dumping. Yeah. You know, wow. you're like industrial, yeah. like what industrial companies yeah. get fined. All right, for. Well, let's explain, explain what I used to do. Yeah. So 
Originally, I wouldn't even pick up my dog's shit. You just leave it. Just leave it. I would just yeah. leave it. It was like it was kind of They're like this area person. where it was like um your home. Not my home. It was like <laughs> no. When I would walk my dog, uh, I would let this was Bree, my my first greyhound. I would let her shit in like this, just as like this grassy field, and I would just keep walking and wouldn't pick it up. Eventually, I got older. I was like, you know, I should probably start picking up the shit. So you grew, you grew a conscious. So when I conscience. when I got my current dog Milo, and I would walk him, I would pick up the shit. Oh. and I would walk past like um like a sewer, right? And I would drop the shit into the sewer. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Another thing I want to point out is a lot of the sewers in Staten Island are connected to what's called the Blue Belt. Mm -hmm. Blue Belt is a massive draining system that that drains like rainwater on the streets into lagoons and marshlands around the island. Uh -huh. And uh, you, I think you were dumping dog shit in the Blue Belt. The so Blue you, Belt you, ones <laughs> are specifically marked. Oh, you're right. They are. So these yes. were not. So it was just a regular, regular old sewer. Regular old sewer. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it, if you walk past that sewer, and it, it was very unpleasant, because that was like your go-to sewer drive. Yes, I mean, in, the summer, in the summertime, you'd smell the you'd shit smell lofting his work. out of yeah. Yeah, yeah, this one particular sewer. <laughs> Ac literally across the street from my house, by the way. Yes. Yeah. My parents' house. Yeah. If I walked out of my parents' house, that was Brian's shit sewer. Right in your face, yeah. <laughs> you now, really are an animal. Yeah. Well, I do want to say... <laughs> I do want to say in my defense, uh -huh. I was living with my mother at the time, mm -hmm. and my mother is a- My mother the car. <laughs> yeah, my mother was a car. <laughs> <laughs> I had to change her spark plugs. Yeah. But my mother Can you is- you believe that was a real TV show? Great concept. <laughs> what do, you know, do you know about this? I have no clue, but I could piece it together. My mother the car, just very quickly, the premise of the show was a man's mother dies- and her soul gets reincarnated inside this, yeah. a car. Was it, is it a red car? No, it's like an old timey, like Model T type car that now he has to keep in his house. And, uh, the car and it bitches talks, at it him. talks to him. That's so funny. And it's his mother. Yes. His That's mother. So weird. <laughs> That's so weird. Mad TV parodied this. It's from like the 60s. Yeah. yeah. Mad That's TV funny. parodied this, which is such an obscure thing to parody. Mm -hmm. Arnie Lang is um, this like dude who ran over a black woman. Mm -hmm. And she possesses his body. <laughs> and this sounds like an Artie Lang yeah, type sketch. And, and, <laughs> and he is he has the soul of a black woman inside of him. <laughs> and he's the mother of this of this black woman. And it's called My Black Mama. <laughs> and That's it's funny. and it's Artie Lang like That's talking funny. to a black woman. He goes, Don't make me break my foot off in your <laughs> ass. <laughs> and they had like a My Mother the Car style theme. Mm -hmm. Good. Anyway, my mother yeah. is an absolute psychopath. Are you blaming your horrible on. shit disposal on your mother? With a couple of things. <laughs> Number one, the spot in front of her house. Plays musical cause. It dominates her entire life. Okay. Her other crazy obsession is the garbage. The garbage. Okay. Now, currently, when I pick up after my dog, I just put my shit in the can. Right. And the garbage men take it. Yeah. I would have to go through... Like an insane procedure as far as disposal of the dog's shit if I was going to use my mother's trash can. What do you have to do? Yeah, it was like, I'd have to get the shit, separately bag it, uh, then get a separate garbage bag, like an empty black garbage bag, wrap the shit again. You have to double bag it. It has to be double bagged. And then placed in the can. Now, this is like... That's redundant. It's going to yeah. multiple floors of the house in all these different places. Couldn't you just use two bags to pick it up and then it's double bagged? No, it, it, it's, it's just... Use one bag. Yeah, it's, that's stupid. Why do you have to double bag? Yeah, it's stupid. just psychotic, insane procedure where my mother needs uh -huh. the garbage can to be immaculately clean. Why? I couldn't fucking tell you. Mm. But it was the bane of my existence for a long time in my life. Now I just pick up the shit and throw it into my can, and it's not a problem. Right. It's a sane thing. Why? It's a perfectly <laughs> sane thing to do. <laughs> well. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you guys, anything new with you, Steve? Not really, no. I Steve saw... doesn't leave his house anymore. I don't really. Uh, <laughs> I know. I work from I home. I worry so about you. This is the only <laughs> time he gets out to. a week. You really don't have to worry about me. Why? Did you get your car fixed? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, 
at first it was fixed. Light went back on. Light went off. So I shall gonna get him. Get, I'm gonna get expected. I didn't. I want him on on you know. Yeah, get edge him. of his seat. Get him needs to. He know. needs to know. Or he's he, not gonna. He texted you about now. He does know. But get, like, get him fine. texted. Our we have a mass text. We get him and yeah. every day for about three weeks. He asked me on my car. Ask for updates on Steve's car. He cared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fixed. I honestly I was like. Here? When we were coming in today, I was like, I wonder if Steve is actually going to have a way to get here because I don't know if he fixed oh, his if, car. If I don't ask for a ride, obviously, I could, I could get here. No, the car's fixed. Uh, it cost a little bit, but it's fixed. What was wrong with it? Uh, so when I got it, I bought like a used car, right? Okay. From, but from a dealer. And they overfilled the transmission fluid so that in certain weathers, the pressure car weathers. was like <laughs> that one. It, it yeah, raised. Apollocrete. The pressure was raised. So they just yeah. had to like. And they realized they didn't do the a correct flush, so I had them flush out everything, replace it with the correct amount. So they fucked up. So why did this cost you money? I mean, it's my car. What's he gonna do? Yeah, what am I gonna do? Break your fucking fun. legs. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we <laughs> <laughs> doing uh, that? Yeah. So no, nothing besides that. Nothing crazy. I saw the new else. Ghostbusters. New the Frozen Empire. Why'd yeah. you do that? I like. I liked the Ghostbusters. <laughs> you didn't like this. I liked it more than the last one. Mm. I hated uh, Afterlife with a fiery passion. I heard there was. I heard there was a lesbian ghost. There. In which one? In the new one. The one you saw. The Afterlife. Uh, that's Frozen what, Empire. That's what he said. He was. But they're that's not. But they're not lesbians. They're they're le- It's one of those things where it's like we want this movie to be able to play in China. Let's make them clearly gay, but we'll never say it. Or really? confirm it. Yeah. It's like you could totally, like anybody with a brain would be like, oh, they're clearly lesbians. Mm-hmm. But the way they talk is like, you could also make it seem like, oh, it's just a deep friendship, which I'm sure the dubs uh, for the Chinese audience do. With okay. they're gay, but they're also not gay. You know, like they they try to do both. Uh-huh. So spineless. Yeah, look, I it's not like I, I give a shit about that the, that character. I think she's a terrible, annoying character. Mm. But um, it was it was all right. I liked it better than the last one. I thought it was all right. Why the little kids? It's it's. I feel like the people making Ghostbusters have no understanding or concept of what Ghostbusters is. It was it what mm. what it should be? It's it's four fucking funny dudes doing a job together, right? That yeah. they don't particularly care about. Yeah. And it's like the first movie is about starting a business. Yeah. And by happenstance, they happen to save the world. Yes. And then it's the same thing in the next movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's like, oh, it's sh- it's clearly the formula should be working class dudes doing a job. Funny situations happen. A bigger thing happens that results in them saving the world. It's mm-hmm. an easy fucking blueprint. But now they're like, what if it was mysterious and they're young and there's this lore and emotionality in Ghostbusters? And that was the last one. Mm-hmm. In this one, it's way more like a Saturday morning cartoon, which was fine with me. Can I, can I pick your brain on something? Yeah. Uh, I think Kristen Wiig is very funny. I like Kristen Wiig. Um, I think the other one, the lesbian girl. Kate McKinnon. Mm-hmm. Also funny. At times. Um. Why is it that that didn't work? It was a complete mis- I didn't see the movie. I saw it. Mm-hmm. It's a complete misunderstanding, again, of what Ghostbusters is. Right. Whereas, like, the original is about dudes starting a business, right. and, like, they're just Could kinda- it be that, do women not start businesses? No, it's just that's not what the movie is. It's like, <laughs> we're in this for the science exploration, and, like, we're trying no, to- No, we're not interested in that. It's like, no, yeah. it's like, you should be greedy scumbags- you right, know, like yeah. that's what's funny. Is no like, one. The, I've said this before. Bill Murray in the first Ghostbusters is the most charismatic character ever put to film, and he's still in the new one. Every second he's on screen, where he doesn't have much screen time, mm-hmm. it was like you could tell he's like doing them a favor. Like he's yeah. like, I'll give you like two days of filming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like any moment he's there and talking, the movie is like this is so good. Just watching Bill. Just Murray. watching Peter Venkman. It's like yeah. anytime Venkman is doing something, mm-hmm. it's fucking captivating. Anytime they he's hate not, this. Do- yeah, it's fucking one of the best moments in any movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw the new Godzilla vs Kong. I don't like those. I don't like monster movies like that. I like the like which Godzilla was twenty fourteen. Yeah, I yeah, like that, that Godzilla. That one was excellent. Yeah. Ninety nine. 
I know you like. You <laughs> Once you start guy. mixing like Godzilla and Kong, I'm out. I don't want. I don't want monsters mixing. It's so stupid. I, I want one monster. I liked. <laughs> I liked Godzilla versus Kong. I liked the last one. I was somewhat intrigued by that minus one movie. Minus one is phenomenal. You loved it. Um, incredible. Can't recommend it enough. Do you know about this? The Godzilla movie where it was like really cheap to make. Compared it was to a ones. remake of the original movie. Yeah. So, well, no, it takes like, place like the year before, kind of. It's and weird. It's, and it's like uh, World War II Japanese fighting the Godzilla. It's cool. It's right after cool. World War II. It's about this failed kamikaze pilot uh-huh. who's dealing with like the guilt of not being a successful kamikaze. Like, he didn't kill himself. Uh-huh. So like everyone in Japan kind of thinks he's looks, like a coward. Like, and that's an easy it. fix, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's also like he's dealing with the full out of all like a Godzilla encounter and like you know it, it's really awesome movie can't recommend it enough speaking okay. of World War II yeah um, I was just uh, just watching this morning you know uh, the World War II week by week on YouTube with yes. Indy it's coming to an end we're coming to the end of the war right no. now no yeah like, wow oh the Battle of Okinawa started this week how oh, long shit. has this been yeah. running? S- six years ago Whew, World War II. Um, next week will be Berlin. So, you know. It's almost over. It's almost. We're coming to the final days. What so is if you haven't got on this? board with this, you need to get on board with this. Yeah, you got to catch up. <laughs> right. Six years. Of- <laughs> What's that? What's he going to do after this? They're doing Korea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Going? That's pretty cool. Um, There's I, always going to be new wars, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did World War One. That's how it started. That was the first yeah. thing. World War II is probably the most documented. Desert Storm. This is, (laughs) you know, the most intensive, like, like deepest documentary ever made. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. We're talking. It's literally. They did Pearl Harbor minute by minute, right? That was part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But every week is another twenty minutes on just that week, getting into the nitty gritty of that week for six years. You know, it's insane. You know what else is insane? What? what? That people email us. Yes. I don't know why anyone's watching. It was also an insane transition. I was good, right? <laughs> I loved it. I liked it, yeah. All right. This is from Roger. 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 Hi, yeah. Roger. Roger, Roger. By the way, the re-releasing Phantom Menace, I'm thinking about- uh, Are you fucking serious? Yeah, and a boy's trip together. Uh, <laughs> going I would do that. Uh, going to see yeah, Phantom we Menace. Gotta, we got Seeing our boy Jar Jar. Dude, wait, we did that once already. Yeah, and I'll fucking yeah. do it every time. <laughs> we also did it with Titanic, <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> Remember, we went to see Phantom Menace in like 2011, yep. something like that. <laughs> In theaters, there was one other person. Well, like, there was a couple. It was like us, our friend group, and a couple. Yeah, and they right. were sitting right in front of us. And we're just fucking dying laughing the whole movie. Every time us. Jar Jar yes. does anything, uproarious <laughs> laughter. And the guy, Genuine from us. The guy got mad at us. <laughs> he yelled at us. Yes. <laughs> it's not fucking funny. We're adults, by the way. <laughs> he yelled at us in the bathroom, too, if you remember. Yes. An adult yes. yelled at another yeah, adult. and our other friend was like, Jar Jar's supposed to be funny. I'm laughing. <laughs> It was Pat. It was the P-Man. Yeah, yeah. What ridiculous controversy. <laughs> We're laughing at the jokes in the, the movie. movie. Yeah. <laughs> a grown man got mad at you for laughing at a Rastafarian alien. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this is from Roger. Sure. Greetings and salutations to filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert. <laughs> As always, Stephen Badagliaco and Aunt G, yo. He nailed it. Day one listener and TSD mm-hmm. transplant. Oh, thank you. Sick. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah sick. You got to be careful with TSD transplants. Right. They, uh, if you're, you, that is an elite group, the day one listeners. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, like, five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what made you be like, I'll I, give this a shot? This is yeah. good. Uh, I thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll get a badge for you one day. First off, I would like <laughs> to let you gentlemen know that after the first pilot episode of Effing History, Woo-hoo-hoo. what is that? Wow, well, that was remember, the other name. Oh my god, that was the other name. The this guy episode. is fucking. We were true. debating about what the name should yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You fellas, be- after the first pilot episode of Effing Woo. History, you fellas became my favorite podcast. Thank you, dude. Holy thank shit. You. I have a request for you guys to do Frank and Jesse. What's that? It's a Western from 1994. He, oh, he directly Frank, answered you. Frank and Jesse James? Yeah. Oh. I would really appreciate hearing you wax poetic about the James gang. Side note, 
I'd also love to hear That's you, a great you guys rate and rank the Opeth discography. Oh my God. Not sure who else would be interested in that, but I'm down to hear it in a bonus or something. Holy anyway, shit. Anyway, <laughs> keep up the great work. Are we doing that right now? Let's fucking do it. You did okay. tell us to do now, this. No, I did tell you. You did. I didn't, but you, I didn't know it was I over. didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't make do a list. It either. However, I can do I, it off the top of my head. I made a okay. list. I can I do made, it off the top of my head. I made a list for this. Um, I didn't know it was Roger. Wow. Okay. Opeth, one of the greatest bands of all time. Anyone who doesn't listen to them is gay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they they do have a lot of, of a lot of albums. They have a lot of albums. Thirteen, I think. Yeah, I'd say the first eight are perfect. It, we're once again we're rating god tier stuff amongst god tier stuff. I think it's the first eight. Everything yeah. up to Watershed, I would consider to be absolutely perfect. And I'll say this. Right, Some we, of the, you can't say eight albums out of 13 are S rank. You know, you got to rank rank. It's tough. Oh, you made them letters? I made... Uh, I'm just going to put them in order. D, C, B, A, and then S. Best. I put, like, my elite and then A, B, C, D. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm... So we're, we're, we're going to have three different lists here. Yeah. We are. And yeah. I'll say this. I find them to be a very varied band. Yeah, they have different Where eras. it's like, it's so different each style and album yeah that it's like it's really a matter of personal preference as to what you sure. really like of course okay everyone has turned off the radio by now yeah uh radio i'm yeah. gonna start my worst album worst one they ever made okay. is in fact the last album unfortunately in cardio venom i i tried to like that i played it like five times when it came out i tried to force myself to like it and it was just so mediocre and boring i just couldn't that's get on it. my detail list. It's the only album that i think is not good all of the other ones are at least good How, when was the last time you re-listened to it well like not long after it was new give it give it another try I, did you play it recently i listened to it for the first time i think like last swedish year. swedish version or english version because there's both i think i listened to the swedish version you th you you couldn't tell. I <laughs> this is a year this is a year ago. Oh, that was the last time you listened to it. Yeah, <laughs> I well, listened to it recently. It's still on my bottom tier. It's the bottom. Them. Yeah, it's easily the worst one. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You feel the same way, Brain? Um, I also put it at the same with Heritage. I Heritage. Think, is I think they're both. Next, I think they're worst. both D tier. They're they're the worst ones. So no, Her Heritage is good, man. Uh, uh, you always is... liked it. I like Heritage. You did. So Heritage was the album that. They completely changed their style and went into a almost 70s prog worship. Yeah. From where they had forged their absolutely unique it, style before that. It's the yeah. demarcation point of like Opeth. They radically changed from there. Yes. You know? And don't go back. No. Um, they gained with this out with that album, I think a lot of older people got into them. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas the younger metal guys actually some of them detest that album. I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad album at all. I think it's fine. It's different than where they were than where they were. Mm -hmm. And the songs just aren't as strong as what would come after There's that. No highs. Yeah, it's very mean. It's like a mid tier album. prog. It's album. long too. Yeah. Uh, you. We all, I, I, so we're all agreed. Oh no, you're not. He's no. Not. I like Heritage a lot. What is so? What is your next weakest? My well, my bottom one would actually be Orchid. You're wrong. Yeah, you should probably turn. We, you should I, probably I, I should turn his mic off. Just <laughs> <laughs> Not my favorite. All right, let's talk about Orchid though. That's should the I just first put album. him on. Should I put him on zero? <laughs> Orchid <laughs> is interesting because obviously it's the debut, so nobody had ever heard anything quite mm -hmm. like this before. But if you listen to it a lot, I think you start to hear. It's almost like Maiden with Death Growls at, at hmm. different times. It is insanely classical based. Yeah. It is very much like showing their technical prowess. And for a first album. I think it was before Agatha really took over the band. Yeah. Um, Twilight is my robe is incredible. Silhouette. Yes. Just the piano solo. Yes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why? You're like, why, why am I listening to like In Mission with Standing is like uh, yeah. fucking gossip. Brian, what are you talking about? Yeah. What don't From, you, why don't Orchid you like is, Orchid? Orchid is my A tier list. From my memory of Orchid, now I haven't listened to it in a while. Mm -hmm. I remember it the production values being a little like uh Production's shittier. not great. It's not and that's that's kind of why I, I put it lower. Do you not like death metal in general? Not really. I don't think. I'm I'm way there. I'm so like weird about what I like and don't like. With yeah. it. I like like a fan, uh, a listener of the show emailed me or was messaging with me and asking me about death metal. I was like, I I don't say I'm a fan. I say I like some things. I don't like other things. I like, like some it's of picky. those. 
So, you know, to mm-hmm. me, it's the production value is not that great. It's, it's, to me, I don't love it the way okay. I like others. All right. I uh, want to uh, give what's my, next? my C tier. And I think, so my D tier, I have Heritage, right? And Incarnate Venom. And Incarnate Venom. My C tier, I put Sorceress. To me, Sorceress is the best of the new era. I put Pell Communion on there. And I put Watershed on C tier. Wow. And you'll see why, because the B, A, and S are just so ridiculously strong and different that I can't. I say I new. I'm, I'm, th- I'm like I'm realizing how ridiculous that sounds. New era is started in 2009. Right, right. Yeah. you can't call it. That. <laughs> don't even. Do, we don't talk. Well, don't even talk about errors. Just talk but, about the the general, just the album where it stands. I, for it's you, you know, That's it's all. definitely Sorceress and Pale Communion are the next two on my list. But I yeah. think Sorceress edges out Pale Communion. I like both of those albums. A I'm lot, reversed. I actually, I you. actually think Pale Communion is better than Sorceress. I like Pale Communion. They're a lot. both good. Yeah, I would actually go Heritage, Sorceress, Pale Communion, and Cardi Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sorceress has ho- uh, the song that sounds like Aqualung. Yeah. <laughs> Will of the Wisp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a great track. River is very good off Pale Communion. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are both two good albums. I also set it so that each tier I can only put three. Okay. So that's kind of why I put Watershed down in the uh, C tier. And then we get to the good stuff. I love Watershed. I do love Watershed. I do too, but... Watershed would be like, like, like probably top five for me. I can't put, because I love everything else so much more. Maybe I'll put Orchid here. And say it's Orchid B is tier. worse than Orchid is worse than Watershed is for me. Okay. Like that I'd go Watershed. I'm I'm sorry, I go Orchid, then Watershed. And then I get into like the stuff I truly, yeah. truly adore. I'm gonna do my B tier. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. So yeah, you can you can you can look. What do you see there? All right, so Steve has in B Morning Rise, Deliverance, and My Arms Your Hers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Doesn't Morning yeah. Rise have Black Rose Immortal on it? Yes, it yeah. does. Dude, so this was I, hard. This was hard for this me. This is fucking hard. Okay. This was hard for me. For me, after Watershed, now we're into like glorious shit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my arms, your hers. I think that's a good spot for it. Yeah. That's where because it's agree. not as good as the other stuff there. Yeah. Um, I think Deliverance and... Deliverance was my first Opeth album I ever heard. Yeah. Changed my life. Got me into this type of music. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have such a love for that album. I think Deliverance and Damnation are very similar. Well, they came out at the same time. So it's like, I kind of want to keep them in the same You want to keep them next to each other. And because they're so similar, I think it kind of drops it down the list. That's my, my rationale. This may be sacrilege to some people, but I'm going to put Ghost Reveries. You could switch it, yeah. As the next weakest. You could. I, I can see Because I, I, I have too much love for Deliverance that I can't put it there. But then I'll put Deliverance. Um, I'm assuming Damnation is Damnation is next. Yeah, uh, Damnation would be like top five. That's me. your number. That's your number one. No, no, it'd be like t- in the top five. Damnation is the I acoustic the- album. Yeah, I love Damnation. Damnation is the album I got that I got my dad to like them with. Like he'd never he yeah. wasn't into this type of music at all, but I I played that for him. And oh, I think it. I meant I meant Deliverance. Deliverance is kind of tied with with Damnation. No, with uh, Morning Rise. Morning Rise. For Morning me. Rise is so fucking good. Yeah. Like Morning Rise might be my number two. I know what my number one is. Morning Rise is a great album. I know my number one. Uh, we're getting down to the wire now. Um, for me, Blackwater Park. Is your okay. top? No. Or, is or the next, next one down. Next Black, one down. Blackwater Park is probably my number three. Mm. So the, my this is my A tier. I got Orchid and I have Ghost Rev. Ghost Reveries for my A tier. I think... This has to Orchid's be... insanely great. This is so brutal. Ghost Reverie yeah, anybody is... Yeah, who doesn't know? Yeah, they can skip it. Uh, Ghost Rev it's fast is forward, guys. unique as <laughs> Ghost Reverie, hard and unique as Hol- you... Harlequin Wait. Forest is so it's fucking so amazing. insanely good. Do you see what you did, Roger? <laughs> I hope you're happy. Yeah. Um, S tier. This is the top three that I can't... I cannot... I'll tell you my top three right now. I can't do a number Still one. Life is number one. Still Life Still is number life. one. Still Life is the best album they ever made. Yes. We all agree on this? Yeah. It's, okay. yeah, it's S tier. Blackwater Park is S tier. And Damn- it is. And Damnation is S tier. For me, it's. I'm, it, with, I'm with you. For me, it's yeah. Still Life, Morning Rise, and Damnation. Damnation is number three. Yeah. Okay. We did it. There That's you it. go. <laughs>
We so, we've lost. You know what? It's everyone. Not, it, we're, we're not too different, but you know, no, we're not too different. But it, I think that's almost a general consensus. Honestly, the the, the most radical thing was Brian shitting on Orchid. Yeah, he's I, an asshole. I don't like that. He's an asshole. That was mean. I, I would boost if I was really saying their ranking. I probably would boost the proc shit up more. How he's about an that? asshole. How about that? You like Circle of the Tyrant? Uh, yeah, I do like that song. That's that bonus track on that album that's just noise it's yeah. unlistenable because the production's so worthless <laughs> thank you thank you for the email roger it was very nice of you we won't do that for everyone but for a first time for a first day listener yes. day one listener we'll and, do that for and you you tickle our fancy with one of our favorite bands yeah yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. we'll We're do it for jump you. at it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an every that's that's a rare occurrence <laughs> let's see if you don't have something else i could always uh no i got you got another email yeah i got a couple oh, okay all, all right, right. Uh, you guys probably don't remember the first email su- I sent, but I, in it, I suggested you listen to the Ahab album based off the whale ship. I remember that. Event and asked about your favorite historical metal. I remember this. Yep. During the reading of that why does email, it? Why do the emails always ask us about music? I, don't know. <laughs> I think we're slowly finding our, uh, <laughs> our, our crowd here. Probably because like what we listen to, so few people ever actually talk about that. I if guess, someone yeah. listens, they're like, oh, they like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yes. uh, during the reading of that email, I was joking about how funny the show was, Thank and you. that Ant was my favorite. Steve said something awesome that made me laugh out loud. I always do. He said, "Fuck this guy." <laughs> <laughs> During That's the fair, yeah. During the pick, <laughs> that a lot. Tw- yeah, during the pick twenty three episode, Steve said something else awesome that made me do one of those Fuck people eyebrows the Rock used to do. He mentioned the United Irishman. Oh yeah. It turns out my paternal great grandfather four times was a United Irishman by the name of Oliver Bond. The oh, name is oh, Bond. Oh, wow, Oliver Bond. Bond. I'm a spy, but also an orphan. What is the United <laughs> Irishman? Refresh my memory. Steve. It was the the group that was like. Rebel fighters, oh, uh, like not the IRA. No, it, I, I don't. I, I gotta like go back in my memory. Um, you cram for a certain movie and then and you kind of slip it. Yeah, you, you lose, lose it for it. a little bit. Um, but if I remember correctly, it was the when oh, Ireland that... lost. It's like the I- Irish Revolution story, I believe. Was, oh, like from the 17... 19- yeah, 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 it was yeah. An, an association of the Kingdom of Ireland. Yeah, when they, they lost the, the kingdom. The French Revolution. When they okay. lost the kingdom, they they had the I Irish group, yeah. yeah. Um, so, this guy's grandfather, he was one of the ringleaders planning the uprising in 1798 Dublin. He was there betrayed by a man named Thomas Reynolds, who was a British spy and arrested by the British at his house during a meeting with 14 other members. Wow. He was Holy originally crap. sentenced to... It's insane de- to know that. To yeah. have that, you know, that yeah. family history. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. He said he was originally sentenced to death, but his sentence was reduced. He died in prison shortly afterward. My family has always told me the official story was that he got drunk and hit his head in his cell. But oh, the family, no. but the family <laughs> legend says he was playing cards with one of his jailers. A scuffle broke out and he either hit his head or was bludgeoned and died. I don't know how true that is. Given wow. he was Irish, both could be true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great That's story. Sick. Yeah. They named a housing project after him in Dublin. So I guess even back then, my family was classy like that. <laughs> oh, we wow. named the ghetto after you. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty crazy. Um, one of our listeners has like an attachment yeah. to a story that's really cool, cool. Yeah. he said also during that pick episode you guys talked about world war ii carrier pigeons and it made me winky th- winky and it made me think of another famous carrier pigeon from world war one share on me i don't know if you guys it's have ever French, heard this French. story but he carried the message that saved the lost battalion from continuing to be ah. shelled by friendly artillery the lost There's- battalion were americans yes they got trapped in the ardennes really yeah. they were lost they were lost. Ah. Uh, there's <laughs> more to it, name. of course, but you could save that for another episode. Maybe you could talk about Sergeant Stubby as well, since you mentioned war animals. I also believe they made a... Not, that sounds familiar, and I can't put it... I think we it's got a to dog. research. I think it's a dog. It's he a dog. said, I also... I believe they also made a made-for-TV movie about the Lost Battalion at some they point. They did. I've seen it. Yes. He used to play it on the History Channel years and years ago. Okay, we got to watch that. And he said, and since I threw in a metal reference last time, the first song on 1914's The Blind Leading the Blind is about the Lost Battalion as well. Anyway, sorry for the long email and keep up the good work, all of you. Thanks, dude. Wow, we got a lot of metalheads, huh? 
1914. Great. They're that, that World War. They're a World War One themed. I think they're black metal. I don't. I've, yeah, yeah. I've heard them. They're good. Yeah. I just I'm not. I can't call myself a fan. Yeah. Um, it's cool. I I think we talked about this. Like you can't. I I. I cannot call myself a fan of something unless you have like encyclopedic knowledge about mm-hmm. it. That's how I feel. You know, like I, you at least like it, like I need to own every album, or at least a good amount. Yeah, yeah you, know? you know, like Ice Earth. I st- I dropped off at a certain point. I think I get it from my dad. Because like he's a dude who like can tell you the band members of like at any given time of any like he has to know you know like I told I just told you he got into Opeth as an adult you know yeah like, I got him into Opeth he needed to learn everything about them like he knows every band member that was ever in the band I I can't do that. I don't know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or we got, Chad <laughs> we got two emails left okay short uh, today. this is a short it's one. fine Philip Job. Hello, the once again, I want to thank you for the list of bands and albums to jump into the prog pool. Oh, we did this. Oh, yeah. another music email. <laughs> it is. It has been a pleasure. To, yeah, it has been a pleasure taking this deep dive. Wow. Also, also <laughs> want to give Brian props for getting the last name right. Reading the email. Sick. Thanks for all the content you provide and all of the stuff I've learned listening. Your favorite Zooligan, Phil. Oh. Thanks, really dude. Thanks, thanks, thank you for thank awesome. you for talking to us and enjoying yourself. That's yeah. great. Last email. This one is a doozy. Just don't play with yourself too much. You know what I mean? All right. Unless you want to. Is it from Jim O'Reilly? Bob O'Reilly. Just had to. <laughs> did, did you re-listen this... to Tommy? By the way. Yes, I did actually. You did? Oh, yeah. What did you think? It's great. Yeah. Tommy's so good. <laughs> Quadrophenia too. Rain on me. Love rain on me. So you've been song? in a, a who mood? Just those two albums I played. But yeah, the Who were great. I was listening to Water, which is a weird song from the Isle of Wight. Okay. You know that song? No. Oh, man. We need water. Somebody's daughter. All right, what do we ready? got? <laughs> so, dear reviewing history, I don't normally comment on podcasts, but I was repulsed by what I saw in a recent episode. Oh, oh no. Oh, I think I know this. Song. I had thought Anthony was the sharpest person in the room <laughs> until episode 98. However, I find it hard to comprehend that he does not understand that there is only one way to eat a banana. <laughs> Literally two topics that ever get emailed to us. Me eating a banana. <laughs> Music and, and, and your metal. banana habits. <laughs> you got crushed in the polls, by the I way. I know. Yeah, that nobody did. was with me. I, can't no, I had a couple of supporters. I had a couple you of supporters. You have to admit, though, I did. I tried to do the poll in a very fair, unbiased way, right? You did. Like I didn't word it like like I didn't say anything about how fucking demented you are. <laughs> they sure did. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tom 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 Milosevsky said Ant should be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> the people agreeing with you though, I found very funny too. Yeah, they're great. Mm-hmm. That's um, my posse. <laughs> <laughs> holding dirty, filthy bananas in your hand. I had, I, I ate a banana yesterday. Yeah, as I was eating it. That's all you'll think about now. Whenever yeah, you have one. You're My done. wife looked at me and just was like, <laughs> "Oh, she knows." Oh, she knows. Yeah. <laughs> had she said anything before this no. was like a thing? No, but now she's on my ass about it. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Like she's like, like I'm eating a banana. I can't enjoy myself anymore because she's looking at me like, "What's wrong with you? Why don't you just eat it?" The- just eat it the normal. I don't want to do that. <laughs> It's not right. It's not. It's not about eating the banana. It's about sending a message. That's right. That's right. But the message is, I'm not a sane person. <laughs> Some men just want to peel the whole thing off. All right. Um, he had been holding the diamonds. <laughs> What's that stupid fucking speech he gives? The Alfred, oh, Alfred. weepy Alfred. He's stealing all the diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> Some men just want to watch yeah, the world well, burn. <laughs> yeah. Like, when was Alfred in India in fucking 1810? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alfred is like a fucking colonial soldier. Yeah. He's fighting the, the, what are the, the thuggies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, could he have been there for like Gandhi? I guess, right? No. He, he, he'd, be, he'd be like 100 years old now. Well, that was 2008. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. All right. Um, I thought Anthony was the sharpest person, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
There is one, only one way to eat a banana. The amount of design and care that has gone into creating something for us to consume and in a certain way is evident to even the most dimwitted person. So he's, he's suggesting that the way I eat a banana is in fact a crime against God and creation. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Examine the exterior. Seven what? sides make up a banana. Seven sides? Yeah. I think it's cylindrical. I don't even uh, think you could really say it either. As well, a side. I think it's it ridge. Has, it has ridges, yeah. So it's a side. Yeah. Um, so is my dick. <laughs> you, have you have a rigid dick? What you like? <laughs> <laughs> is it an octagon? <laughs> what is happening? He has a rigid <laughs> octagonal dick from all the banana talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's why he t- <laughs> That's why he takes the peel off. It reminds him of himself. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> exposure. He said, seven sides make seven up- Seven deadly sins. Seven, <laughs> seven sides of the banana. Uh, think about the human fist now. <laughs> Bruce Dickens would be really upset about how you fucking yeah. ate a banana. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> there are three indents that line up with the three on the hand's topwise side when the fingers are curled. What is it? The divine fucking equation? Into a clutching <laughs> position at the base. A series of matching grooves. Is he giving examples? Like you're <laughs> Yes. He sent a what? diagram. <laughs> Let's imagine, however. What? It's fucking funny. Yeah. Let's it's imagine, funny. however, that someone's brain is less wrinkly than a banana. There are other hints. The banana curls towards the mouth when handled appropriately to appeal to our sense of taste. <laughs> the design of a banana with its natural container and holder is, in my He's opinion, let you live the down. most intelligent design discovered in the natural world. It's evidence of God. Yes. <laughs> Does Anthony... You're, sim- going, you're going against God. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking heretic. <laughs> Does Anthony simply pour a quart of he's, pork lo mein? He's, he's in- calling me a defiler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> does Anthony simply pour a quart of pork lo mein into oh, his hand or squirt ketchup <laughs> into his palm to eat fries <laughs> instead of using other containers as they were intended to be used? <laughs> I hope you can show Anthony the illustration I've enclosed to help him. Oh my God. Can you show I want to us? thank you all once more for your expertise and entertainment. And I hope to sh- meet and shake hands with all of you in the future. Well, not Ant Sticky Ant. <laughs> <laughs> Ever your affectionate listener, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Oh, so and let me pull funny. up uh, the banana. <laughs> that is nightmare. so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to read the bullet points? Anthony's <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> I, I can't oh my god! It's either. ten. It's ten bullet points. Uh, is shaped, is shaped for the human one. hand. Is shaped for a human. Hand. Has a non-slip surface. Has outward indicators of inward content: green, too early; yellow, just right; black, too late. Has a tab for removal of wrapper. <laughs> That's the top black part. Is perforated on wrapper, so you got the, the yeah. groove. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, biodegradable wrapper. Yes, it's six safe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is shaped for a human <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Has the a point at top for eat ease of entry. Is, is pleasing to, to the taste buds. buds and is curved towards the face to make eating process easy. He really doesn't like your wow. process. Wow, <laughs> you he, he put, have defied God <laughs> with how you eat a banana. <laughs> I don't disagree with him. I think he did defy God. I mean, I'm I'm going to lose this argument, you were I think. <laughs> You've lost. You lost yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> now they're just making sure you know you lost. Yes, I, I need to be buried now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's history time. All right. Uh, I have a... V- it's light. It's Let's a little go. longer, but very... All right. You want Let's me first? It. Yeah. Okay. It might be longer than, than my usual ones because I did some research. All right. Have you boys ever heard about the 1904 World's Fair Olympic Games. I have now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew there was an Olympics. There is an Olympics. In St. Louis, 1904, August 30th, there was a marathon held at the Francis Olympic Field Stadium. A marathon. It was a marathon. Okay. Right? I'm going to give you a little bit of details of this marathon. Marathon. The event was part of the Louisiana Purchase Exposition, also known as the World's Fair. 100 years later. Mm -hmm. 32 men joined. Okay. The distance they had to run was 24.85 miles. All right, that's less than the 26.2. 
That's standard now. Yeah. Oh. Here's the thing. You know that offhand? Yeah. The ever, yeah. The, you'll, if you ever impressive. look, mm-hmm. if you ever look at a car and you see a twenty six point two sticker, mm-hmm. it's people bragging that they completed a marathon. Oh. Well, this marathon, because it was August thirtieth, was ninety degree weather. Okay. Oh, it included seven hills, which varied from one hundred to three hundred feet high. So does Rome. This was a brutal marathon. Mm-hmm. The hills make it a bitch. The hills have eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's They're talk alive. With the sound, sound of music. music. Yeah. So, <laughs> mind you, standardizations of marathons at this point really weren't set up in this specific location, but we'll get into that in a minute. Let's talk about some of the players who ran this, at least the ones that we're going to hear about. Okay. okay. Ready? Len Tonyen. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Didn't Len do the song Steal My Sunshine? Yes, they did. But he's brother and sister duo. We're going to call They're oddly like, close in that video, and it seems like they're romantically involved. It's really? very uncomfortable for everyone. <laughs> We're going to call the man Len- <laughs> Lentor and his friend Jan Masciani. These men. Are they Italian? No. They are from the South African Swana tribe. Oh, man. Yeah. We are here to run. They were just ended up in the World Fair in St. Louis. Okay. They probably, they they probably won. Just like a coincidence? No, well, hold on. <laughs> they were favorites. But as a coincidence, they were there. They're like, we're going to run the marathon. They showed up barefoot. Oh, well, they didn't have any shoes. They didn't have any shoes. Not, they it, became, it wasn't a publicity stunt. No, <laughs> yeah. they became the first Africans to compete in mm-hmm. modern Olympic Games, believe it or not. Wow. Okay. Now we're going to get a couple more characters. Cuba's, mind you, this is a World Fair. Mm-hmm. Cuba's Felix Carvajal. 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 Arrived in trousers, a dress shirt, and walking shoes. <laughs> nice. Why? He lost all his money gambling in New Orleans and so almost missed the left. race, so he had a hitchhike. This guy's awesome. The runners see him and go, this ain't going to work. You need shorts. It's nine degrees out. They cut his dress pants at the knees. So now he just has like cut off trousers. Cut cut dress pants and a dress shirt. Brian, this turns into the wacky races. I'm not kidding. Dude, it it gets crazy. Let's talk about Sam Meller, A.L. Newton, John Lorden, and Michael Spring and Thomas Hicks are all experienced American marathoners. Okay. Okay. So we have some ex- we have some experienced runners, yes. we have some new runners. There were ten Greeks who showed up who never ran a marathon anymore. They're like, we're the world's fair. We'll just do this. Well, it's the Olympics, so f- everyone's just like, okay, we need some Greeks. We need some Greeks. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite guys, um, Albert uh, Corey, was Albert Corey was a French immigrant to the United States, but didn't have the correct documents. So he thought he was running for France. But he was actually listed as running for the United States. Oh, no. So the whole time he's like, yeah, France. And he's like, he's for us. <laughs> like, he just didn't know so what was we, going on. It seems like we really stacked the field with Americans. Well, Home field event. Yeah. let's talk a little bit about the race, the setup, and what happened. Because it's, honestly, I was crying reading this. Oh. 3.03 p.m. the race starts. Mm-hmm. The course was set up by a man named James Sullivan. Okay. James Sullivan specifically wanted to minimize fluid intake to test the human limit because he was doing he was doing research on purposeful dehydration. So he used them all as guinea pigs. I'm going to kill people. Yes. Hold on. I need to push them to the <laughs> limit. Mind you, the organizers had to drive in front of the race with doctors because they have to monitor the men. All right. But he's never set up a race before, so it was like 90% dirt fields. <laughs> dirt no, roads. There's no there's no track. There's no track. So as they're driving in front. <laughs> it's kicking up dust. <laughs> all over. All over the for like 25 miles. <laughs> and, this and sounds only, like a real fucking amateur hour <laughs> event. There's only two spots for water. The first spot is 12 miles in because he wants to make them dehydrated. <laughs> So you have to run 12 Half miles you can get a drink. And then the next one is at mile 24. <laughs> so like right the before end of you the finish. Race. <laughs> and it's like, a, is it one of those little cups? Yeah. <laughs> he also. Do you remember he, that time the New York Marathon was happening and uh, they were running and the guy held out uh, water for the runners yeah. and he grabbed it and it was actually hot coffee? Yes. Oh, in his face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My friend was a runner from Kenya. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He uh, flew in. What was his name? Jean-Paul Jean-Paul. Here it comes. comes. It already happened. Yeah. (laughs) He stayed with uh, my friend, Uh and he would sleep through alarms. 
<laughs> so I trust Elaine. Look at that little bastard. <laughs> I trust Elaine. She is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so James James Sullivan was so focused on doing his purposeful dehydration study uh. that he didn't study the route. So he this guy's an asshole. He, so the guys had to dodge cross town traffic delivery. <laughs> wow! It's like dodge they run through town. It's like Frogger. <laughs> Delivery wagons, railroad trains, trolley cars, broken rocky streets, and people walking their dogs. I'll tell you this. If the Olympics were still like this, a lot more people would be into it. It is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. I'd rather watch this. Out of the 32 men, only 14 finished. It is the lowest in history. Wow. Let's talk about what happens to these guys. This should be the event. Yeah. Let's talk about what happens to these guys. William Garcia of California was initially leading early on in the race. Uh, but Until almost, he was attacked by Tuscan Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> You're not too far off. Uh, he almost became the first fatality of an Olympic marathon because he collapsed on the side of the road and was hospitalized with hemorrhaging because the dust coated his esophagus <laughs> oh my God. and ripped his stomach lining. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, there's that much That's dust. brutal. Because yeah. he was too close to the car. To the car. <laughs> but it's the, it's the runner of the event. It's in the front. <laughs> so he's just causing this. John Lorden suffered a bout of vomiting and gave up after 10 miles. Len Tao, the South African that I mentioned before, was one of the people who were destined to win the race. They're like, this guy's got it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He was chased a mile off course by rabid dogs. (laughs) 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 He came in 14. This should be a great movie. Dude, it gets gets better. (laughs) Felix Caraval, the guy from Cuba, Mm -hmm. pauses to chat with spectators. He sees a car, walks up to it, Sees that the people in there are just eating like peaches. They're minding their own business. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, can I get one? They're like, no, what the fuck? He grabs two and starts running again. While <laughs> he's, he's stealing. He's stealing. <laughs> Which country was he from? Cuba. So They started a war for that. <laughs> as he's running, as he's running a, a, a further bit more down the road, he sees an apple orchard. Stops. Sees this guy's it. a fruit fiend. Yeah, this he's guy a fruit loves fiend. fruit. He stops and is like, I'm going to have some apples. <laughs> Not realizing the tree he's pulling from <laughs> completely rotten he's uh, eating rotten oh, apples ugh. suffers a stomach stomach cramps That's a, Allison and he's stuff. like fuck this lays down in the middle of the fucking orchard and naps wakes up Who still the fucking yeah, hair in the hair yeah <laughs> the guy woke up and finished fourth <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty impressive it's insane okay everyone else was dead do you think you could win no I think I could win this race the next two are, are <laughs> utterly fantastic the first athlete to cross the finish line was Fred Lors. Okay. American distance runner who actually would go on to win the Boston Marathon a year later. USA, baby. He was, yeah. Until they found out at the nine mile mark, he began suffering cramps and hitched to ride back to the, in a car f- for the last 11 miles. <laughs> I got out early. Yeah. <laughs> he proceeds to jump out and run to the finish line where he's like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the winner. <laughs> After being held as the winner, he takes a photograph with Alice Roosevelt, the daughter of the U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt uh-huh. at the time, and she placed a wreath on his head. And right before he gets the medal, all the spectators are like, this motherfucker cheated. And he goes, ah, you got me. It was just a joke. I wasn't going to actually do it. <laughs> sure. Ah! <laughs> Let's talk about the, the winner of the race. It's like, uh, remember in Life of Brian? He was, banned for, he was banned for life, by the way. And then after they reviewed all, like, this entire situation, they're like, now nah, you can run again. And this won, is so ridiculous. He won yeah. the Boston Marathon, yeah. So... The race was actually won by a man from the USA named Thomas Hicks. Okay. What <laughs> hell did he endure? <laughs> At the time, it's the slowest Olympic in history with three hours and 28 minutes. Wow. For a marathon? Yeah. That's pretty good. No, it's, it's not. It's the slowest 26 in history. 26 miles? Three hours, 28 minutes, and 53 seconds. It's the slowest in history, at least. Yeah. This guy should be doing a mile a minute. What hell did this man endure? <laughs> I'll Wait. tell you right now. Hold on. You think <laughs> they're, they're, they're running at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no human being has ever broke the minute mile. I know. It's <laughs> cheated. But anyway, <laughs> seven miles from the finish line, his handlers, like his team, were like, okay, he's not going to make it. We need to give him a boost. And now we get the first recorded uh, instance 
of using uh, performance drugs in his in Olympic history. Really? Yeah. The drug that they gave him was a concoction of strychnine, 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 egg whites, and brandy. <laughs> strychnine, strychnine. strychnine numbs you a little bit because it's used in small doses as a stimulant and also rat poisoning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what this also does, especially when you're under extreme duress, you start hallucinating. <laughs> Have some rat poison. <laughs> so it's good for you. So he's hallucinating. I have a cure for all <laughs> ailments. <laughs> <laughs> he's hallucinating for most of the run, and he could barely walk. <laughs> Eventually, he's exhausted, and he can't make it. Wait, this is the guy who won? This is the guy who won. <laughs> <laughs> His team goes to him and is like, you can make it. He thinks he's hallucinating. He's like, I got 20 more miles. <laughs> And they're like, he's about to collapse. His knees are locking. Like, we got to help him. They pick him up, his team, and they start walking him across the finish line, and he's air running. He's just like, <laughs> he's trying to run in the air. <laughs> and he doesn't know that he's being lifted because he has no clue where he is at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but he was carried over the line. That counts? It, I. What does it matter at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that footage of um, this? Uh, it's the It's in the Olympics. It's like uh, they're running on a track. Um, this black dude, he falls or like pops his ACL or something and completely collapses oh, I know. on the track. And he's not gonna if he's not gonna be entered in the Olympic record books if he doesn't cross the finish line. Like forget about winning. It's like mm. now just like getting across the line so you right. you're in history, you know? And the guy's father runs onto the uh, oh, I've seen this, yeah. The track and like lifts him up it's and touching. kind of carries his son across the yeah, finish line so he can get into the records. That's awesome. Yeah, but it's kind of like that, I guess, right? Mm. Where it's like kind of, but they drugged him. <laughs> uh, somebody who saw this, like the lifting it up, they actually described what he looked like. His eyes were dull, lusterless. The ashen <laughs> color of his face and skin had deepened. His arms appeared as weights well tied down. <laughs> He could scarcely lift his legs while his knees were almost stiff. So he's just kind of like almost dead at this point. There's actually pictures of it. If you're the guy, the water guy, <laughs> like, don't you say to yourself, wow. Oh, you think this is a water guy? Like, <laughs> there was a water well in like a pond or something. It wasn't like. No, I mean, the guy who organized this to be like fucked up with the water. Oh, James Sullivan. Yeah. Do you think he thought back to this afterwards? Like, oh, man. Do you want to know what he said about it? I yes. have it. The director, James Sullivan, stated that a run of this distance and intensity was indefensible on any ground, but historic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is fucked up and happened. We went a bridge too far. We went a bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> but Wasn't this still fucking awesome? It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> that, so they, they, they are the winner. And it's or like, that's the one of the funniest fucking that's things great. I've heard. That of should it, like, be a ever. movie. It yeah. needs to be a movie. It's like wacky race. It could be a Coen really Brothers is. movie. A hundred percent. It should. The guy getting chased by dogs is very funny. Yeah. The, yeah. I, he was probably like stopping, oh, no. stopping to get water, and they were near like the, the drinking fountain, and he just got chased away a mile off course. <laughs> what do you think of the movie Rat Race? I like I Rat like Race. It, yeah. I like Rat Race. I like it. It's I like mad, the guy mad, who mad, uh, mad world, but it's it's good. Who it's lost all his money gambling in New Orleans and just still yeah. decided to show up. It's a race, a race. I hope in I in a full suit. <laughs> That's my story. Next? 1904 uh, Olympic marathon. You could go in. You want me to go? Yeah. Okay. I am going to talk about um, the mysterious incident. Mysterious. mysterious. Yes. That Unsolved happened, mystery? That happened in the 1960s. Okay. Uh, this requires a little bit of a background. So uh, in 1957, in uh, what was then Dutch New Guinea, it's now Papua New Guinea. Yeah, that's how I know it. Um. It was a place of dense, dark jungles. Okay. Um, tribesmen, mountains, Danger. very isolated Bushman. area. Yes. Danger. Uh, at the time, there was uh, some contention because the brand new country of Indone Indonesia was moving in on the territory and trying to claim some of it. Uh, the Dutch were desperately trying to keep it. And the UN was kind of uh, giving them problems about it, and they wanted to make it seem like they were a civilizing force on the island and trying to make it, you know, good and livable. Mm -hmm. 
at the time, some of the tribes were fighting each other. They were having a bit of a war okay. on the island. So the Dutch didn't want anyone to find out about this. So they sent in some soldiers to quell the fight, stop it. Mm-hmm. Stop right? the fighting. Now, these, these tribal peoples, very few, very little, to, little to no contact with the outside world ever. Yeah. They're aware that there are people out there, but they view it in their civilization as sort of anything coming from off the island is from the spirit world. So they regard um, these outsiders as almost like gods. God, not so much gods, but like ghosts or demons. Oh. They're a supernatural uh, entities. Yes. That's great. So these Dutch soldiers come in, contact with them, and they're trying to stop them from fighting. But the tribals are like, these are evil entities. Well, let's fight them. So they try to kill them. Okay. And the Dutch end up shooting like five of them and then having to leave. So they've killed five people and they're out. Fast forward to 1961. They go back. Michael Rockefeller. This is the okay. great grandson of John D. Rockefeller, you know, or Standard yeah. Oil. He is the son of Nelson Rockefeller, the governor of New York and future vice president. Uh, he is kind of a hippie guy. He's into um, art. He loves like ancient and primitive. He calls it primitive art. Okay. Like oh, these, these, you know, pre, uh, pre-industrial, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you know, outlying peoples in the jungle. Native he's, art. He's into shit. it. Um, Low skill art. <laughs> Low skill. <laughs> <laughs> um, he wants to go to New Guinea and meet these Azmat people. So he does as part of like a documentary team. And he's, okay. he's part of making this documentary film that gets made. You can see it. Oh, cool. Um, he learned the asthma people, by the way, are it's no, it's an open secret. Cannibals? They are brutal cannibals. Oh, okay. They've been eating people for centuries and centuries. Oh, great. Uh, but he makes contact with them. He has, uh, you know, he, he can talk to them a little bit and learn about them. And they film them doing their tribal shit. He goes back to America. Has this footage. Yes. And decides he wants to go on a second expedition back. That's a bad move. This time he's going to take anthropologists with him and like do a, a real real study. real study of these people. Get to the heart of it. Should have right. brought just guns and kill them all. They're on a boat out on the ocean off the coast of the island. A storm comes in. Oh, no. The boat capsizes. Oh, no. They survive the storm by They're stronger than the storm. holding on right. to the hull of the upturned boat for 24 hours. They're out in the ocean. Just oh. holding on to the boat. Trying uh. to wade out the rain. And they do. But now they're out on the ocean. They can see the island 12 miles in the distance. <sighs> After waiting for 12 hours on the top of this upturned boat, Michael Rockefeller decides... He's got a better chance if he straps two gasoline tanks to him as like buoys and make a swim for it. He think the last thing anyone has ever heard this man say is, I think I can make it as he jumps into the ocean and swims. He is never seen or heard from by anyone ever again. Now, mm. yeah, that's where this, this is where the story gets weird. Okay. <laughs> I mean... I mean, we can assume. We assume he died trying to make it. Or he made it and got eaten. So, right. The Dutch, this is the governor of New York's son. Yeah. He's from one of the wealthiest families to ever exist. He's a powerful guy. The Dutch government will do two weeks of searching for him. They scour the island. They talk to locals. Nobody sees him. There's no sign of him whatsoever. I feel like the locals would have said, you know, yeah, we saw him. The Rockefellers want their son back. So they hire a private investigator to go to the island and try and find what happened to him. Oh, boy. The investigator... Oh, and they put what out What year a, is this? 1961. Okay. They put out a... Um, I was hoping you were going to say 40s, because I imagine, like, you want me to go find your son. I'll find your son. In the jungle. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, yeah, maybe he still spoke Bogart. like that. <laughs> He's a flat foot. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, so this guy goes to the island, and the Rockefellers He's have- He's in the fucking jungle, full trench coat. <laughs> Fedora. <laughs> Where were you on the night of April, <laughs> tell? <laughs> There's a guy, guy with his dick hanging out, yeah. holding Chewing on an arm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, like the cut of your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> There's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in reward money for anyone who can find some information on. That's okay. a lot. That's a lot. So the investigator goes to the island. He interviews some of the locals. He meets a man wearing glasses that suspiciously look like Michael Michael Rockefeller's glasses. Uh, I think I've heard this. Yeah. Um, he asks the guy. What? Excuse me, just one more thing. <laughs> oh, it's Columbo. Columbo. Oh. Columbo's here. <laughs> uh, he asks the guy, where'd you get those glasses? The guy's like, I found them. <laughs> Doesn't tell him anything. Yep. Uh, but he does meet someone with three human skulls that he claims came from white men that they have killed and eaten. Okay. And he says that one of them is the man that he's looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, he trades a boat engine for the three skulls and brings them back to America. There is no, there's nothing other than hearsay about that. Like, this is just what we've heard. There's and no he documentation. Gave, and he gave them a boat engine. Yes. Which, what use? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they yeah. ripped it apart and made tools out of it. Um, but we do know for a fact that the Rockefellers gave this man the reward money. Okay. Okay. The, yeah. the, the detective. Yes. Now, fast forward to 2014. Oh, wow. A guy named Carl Hoffman writes a book called mm-hmm. Savage Harvest about this incident. Okay. And he does deep investigative journalism. Is he, the tribe still there? He goes to the island to meet with the tribe. So this guy, Carl Hoffman, he comes to find out that missionaries on the island in 1961 heard what had happened to Michael Rockefeller and reported it to the church and to the Dutch government. And it was covered up because a week after this, the Dutch like government was giving a speech at the UN about how they are trying to save the island and civilize it. And they did not want this getting out. Okay. Um, He also goes to the island. And as soon as he gets there, like within an hour of getting there, he has an interpreter with him, and his interpreter is listening to what the villagers are saying to each other. He hears two guys say to each other, don't tell the white men about the guy we killed. <laughs> so he's like, we got to talk to these guys. And he starts interviewing the people. And he, after pressing them a little bit, they straight up tell him, we found him on the beach. And as revenge for what the Dutch had done in 1957 when they killed the five, it was the two two of the sons of the guys that got killed oh. when when the Dutch shot them. Okay. Oh. Stabbed him with spears. So he did make it. He did make it. He did make it. Stabbed him with spears. They brought him back to the village. They cracked his skull open. They ate his brains. They peeled the skin off his bones. You took out his brain, yeah. you bloody baboon. Ate him. And then use his bones to make tools and weapons. Jesus. And that is what happened to Michael Rockefeller. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Is um, he the last Rockefeller? Like, is the line dead? I don't think so. I'm sure they're still around. But yeah. Mm. Pretty fucked up. Fucked up, but I kind of like... <laughs> I should feel a little more worse for the guy than oh, I do. Oh, the guys on the boat? I didn't say this. Yeah. They got rescued because a boat just happened by, like... Hours after he swam away. <laughs> oh my oh, god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I. I um... uh, there are over two hundred fifty members of the family who are direct descendants of John D. Rockefeller. There you go. So, Oof. yeah, pays to be in that bloodline. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're doing research on cannibals and you get eaten by cannibals, I don't know if I should feel so bad. Did you ever see? <laughs> like, um... You know, like. You know what you're gonna get to. Did you see the movie Green Inferno? No. no. Eli Roth made it. It's um. Oh, I I I think I saw like the parts of it, not not the whole thing. The, so the, these like uh, college like hippies, they mm-hmm. go on like a trip and they come across South American cannibals. Oh god. Yeah. yeah. It's a good movie. Mm. Eli Roth does a lot of like uh, brutal torture porn, though. I feel. 
I don't I don't think so. I think uh, hostile is, but I don't think like that is, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that works for the story because it's cannibals. Mm. Right. Right. But uh that's a brutal story. Yeah. Yeah. Did recent uh, events inspire you to pick this one? I saw uh, on Instagram Barbecue, someone talking right? about it. Oh, okay. And I was like, this is an interesting and I looked into it and it was very fascinating. So I, I, I thought you were talking about a b- I thought bar- oh, barbecue in Haiti? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> barbecue is a bad dude. <laughs> That's scary. Yeah, hit him with a bite lock. <laughs> uh <laughs> All right. okay. Mine does not involve uh Murder or cannibals. <laughs> Mine is very lighthearted and fun. Um, it also will kind of tie into my pick. Uh, have you guys ever heard of Bill Veck? No. Bill Veck? Nope. Tell me about Bill Veck. Bill Veck is a baseball legend. He's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. That's not, I don't know about <laughs> He's not, not a player, though. Uh, even if you're a baseball fan... A lot of people probably wouldn't know about him unless you're like a baseball history nerd. Okay. Um, He eventually became a franchise owner of various different teams. Like he owned the Indians at one point, the Browns and the White Sox. Cry for the Indians. Yeah. Uh, He was (laughs) the first. You don't like that song? No, it's not. I like that song. (laughs) That's like their best song. I love Anthrax. Really? Yeah. That's not their best song. Ant- mad at Madhouse is good. Yeah. Anthrax is my favorite of the uh, the oh, big four. What about Caught in a Marsh? That's good what too. Is it I'm really not a Thrax fan, to be honest. Yeah, me neither. But I Thrax know is great. For the is a shit. <laughs> um, uh, Among the Living is fucking great. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's the one uh, with the guy in the feet with the hat. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway. So he actually was the first person to sign a black player to an American League team. He signed Larry Dobby the same year Jackie Robinson signed, and they won the World Series. That is the last time. What the, team? The Indians. Cry, cry. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. But um, it was the last time the Indians won a World Series. But wow. The, the reason he is kind of known was he did wacky promotions and events as a baseball owner. Did he do the Disco Demolition Derby? That is him. Oh, wow. I don't do you know, know about that, that? No, tell me. So that's that's like a blip as far as what he's what done. What about the beer the beer thing? Is that him too? I don't think that was him. The uh, five cent beer night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you ever my hear God. So um, there was a baseball team. I forget which one. They did five cent beer night. And it caused a riot. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. Got it's going to get people but, killed. Um, Disco Demolition Night was... What people say is the end of disco. Yeah. Uh, they they had a promotion at the stadium that everyone brings their disco albums and they blow them up on the stage. And Dean's against the Texas Rangers. They blow yeah, them up on stage. Yeah. At the end, like that, like the seventh inning stretch, everyone threw, came and threw their disco <laughs> albums. And they got them together and blew, blew them, them up, up with like TNT. Yeah. You, <laughs> oh, what was Nickel Beer Night? Indian. Oh, so it was him. He's Nickel Beer Night. I don't know if he was the owner of them at the time. That's a, mm-hmm. a violent. He, it seems like he draws a lot of violence, explosions. And, you know, <laughs> well, that riots. was like a fun spectacle. It was yeah. like, come celebrate the end of disco. Just right. Blow it up. And they blew up all these albums and right. shit. There's footage. It's fucking cool. Mm-hmm. But he did all sorts of like wacky, zany things. So uh, one of my favorite. around for a long time because that was both of those, I think, were in the 70s. Yeah, he. He lived a re- he lived until eighty six. Mm-hmm. So you know he um he was an owner and yeah, like, yeah, participant yeah, yeah. forever. Um, my favorite incident is he knew that the league office filed paperwork on like let's say like Fridays at three p.m. and if you sent a player transaction in before it could get registered, they had to honor it for like the next day. So he. I don't understand what this means. Basically, it's like I so I want to sign Steve to play baseball, right? Okay. Hey. I have to send it to the league. Okay. So they can approve that Steve is a player. And it's you can't do it after a certain time on Friday. The league won't have anyone in the office or something. It's okay. some loophole that he knew about. What he did was he signed a midget to the baseball what? team, named uh, the guy's name is Eddie Goodell. Okay. 
He is the shortest person in baseball history. He is, I think, like three foot eight. So this is known as Vex Midget Incident, which I guess I shouldn't say, right? Like, you keep saying midget. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, hate that. Yeah. They like little people. But that that's what the name of this incident Some is. Some say dwarf. I don't know. I like dwarf. It sounds magical. It does. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, if you're a dwarf, you probably have an axe and a helmet and like spikes. And my shit. axe. Cool. Yeah. I like that axe. better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call him dwarf from now on. So, <laughs> so he signs this guy. And he gives him a custom jersey that's one, it's a one eighth oh instead God. of like a number. And oh, he's very insensitive about this person's height. And he puts this I'm guy sure he's in. He's getting paid well. Oh, yeah. Sure. He puts this guy into the, the, the game, game. Right. without like. Did the Indians suck or something? He just did fun things, <laughs> you know? Why can't we have this guy back? Like, this is a guy who, like, <laughs> he, he had, like, all the bobbleheads and giveaways. He's kind of, like, the, the, the father of, like, mm -hmm. of fun, of fun at, at games. Um, so he signs this, this person, and he's like, don't swing no matter what. Now, baseball, your strike zone is based on... Your body, your yeah. your body size. So the pitcher would have to be throwing very low, very low, very low, because he's so small. Which is very right? hard because if you hit the ground, it's. And the, he told him, no matter what, do not swing your bat. So the guy <laughs> gets up there, is walked on four pitches every time, because <laughs> they can't find the strike zone. <laughs> it's a man on base. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's funny. He he has one. This guy has one single plate appearance. Uh huh. That's Gets hysterical. on first base is immediately pulled for a pinch runner. <laughs> the league was fucking pissed. Furious. That's hysterical. It's cheating. Though. It's is it? Not yes. Really. No, it's not. He did he it kind of ball. without league yeah. approval in like mm -hmm. a fun way. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm sure Sports Center would like be raging. Yeah. This is a crime against baseball. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They would call it a like, crime yeah. against humanity. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> It's it's just a funny little thing that happened, and uh, that's one incident uh, about this. He is the smallest player to ever play in Major League Baseball. That's a fun story. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's pick time. We do have pick time. Uh, Steve, you go first. I believe we have guests for this one. Yes. Yeah, Escape from Alcatraz. Escape from Alcatraz. Yeah. That is going to be dropping... Actually, we need to change this. I'm sorry. I will go first. Moneyball will be first on May 1st. Money. I don't think it matters which, like, the way we pick it doesn't well, matter. That's the order it's I think in. some people. That's what they expect. They expect. Well, stop that. being so picky. So, well, May 8th, I know the uh, that's when they want because their book drops the next day. Okay. So, we're having some guests. We're having we guests, guests for Escape yeah. from Alcatraz. They're uh, releasing a book about it. It is, this is an intellectual guess. Yes, it's yeah. it's a relative of the Clint Eastwood character. Do they know what we're about? Yeah, are they familiar with the show? They network? reached out to us. That's weird. Yeah, but they might just be like, history podcast. Yeah, they might think that we're, we're real. We're real, yeah. And not just well, two, three assholes. Then we're right. going to have a really awkward, fun show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Escape from reviewing history. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen that movie? Never seen it. I no. saw it once. It's good. I can't wait to ask them. Like, if you were in Alcatraz, who would be the the one guy that you would fuck? You know, like, because you got to pick one. <laughs> like, if we they were make cell. such a point in that movie <laughs> right away to be like, nobody ass fucks Clint Eastwood. <laughs> like, like they make it known very yeah. quick. Okay, uh, sure. But uh, yeah, so Moneyball is May first. May eighth is uh, Escape from Alcatraz. Escape from Alcatraz and Ant. I'm doing the Werner Herzog Conquistador movie. I can't remember the name of it. I don't know sub, what he said. The subtitle is The Wrath of God. What is it? Uh, I almost said Guillermo del Toro. No. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro's Wrath of God. Germans in South America playing Spaniards. Uh, are they playing Spaniards? Yeah. Because there so. are Germans. I've never seen it. There's Germans in South America now. I've seen I gear the Wrath of God. I've seen I gear. like the trailer and like certain i've seen people talk about the movie it looks incredible oh okay i've heard the, really good things yeah it looks is it like in english yeah oh but it looks fucking dark as all hell oh good so this is uh always, this should be fun i'm excited that always lifts my spirits up <laughs> we need we need some battles yeah we need some, yeah we're due for some some bloodshed right we spent too much time in like the fucking, happy we've been happy lately not even happy just like the mundane world not the the extremes of the human experience 
Yeah. That, about, that's what he's all we're talking about. Talking about car yeah. dealerships and fucking trains. <laughs> yeah. Saving like, the day. And <laughs> we're about transportation. Yeah. Almost. We did some music. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Yo, Let's you, get back to our roots. Wait, get back real, to fucking real quick. Beat. Man killing man. Yeah. Wait, real quick. <laughs> Put on Death Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> if you think of the last block, we did a movie with a bus. Yeah. A plane. Yeah. And a train. <laughs> a train. <laughs> and then a car fucking dealership. Yeah. yeah. It was all transportation. This is a beaver fucking... You've taken over the show, and you didn't even know it. I didn't recommend any of these. Yeah, you're a real piece of work. I know. <laughs> Jerk off. I enjoyed it. Uh, some of it. <laughs> All right. That's well, yeah. Fun. Thank you for watching, listening, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, don't say a word. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. To, don't say a word. Don't. This is not an Arctica song. Don't say a word. <laughs> now we're gonna get emails. Yeah. What you are like your favorites in Arctica? <laughs> um, I listened to My Celine the other day. Were you? Oh, that's yes. great. That's great. Uh, Best okay. power metal band. Go right now. Fast. Fast. Guardian. Good. That's the right answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can we can finish now. Yeah. I had to think for a second. I was like, yeah, it's Blind Guardian. <laughs> All right. Want to give a big thank you to everybody listening and or watching. We greatly appreciate it. Want to give a big thank you to Tell em, Steve, Dave, Brywall, Q, Get Em, Lance Record down in the studio. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, send an email to the show, reviewinghistorypod at gmail.com. Follow us on all social media, our view history pod on Twitter, everywhere else we're reviewing history pod. Follow me personally on all social media at Brian Rupert. That's Rupert with two Ps. Follow me on Letterboxd. I rank or review every single movie I watch, including the ones in my personal life. I will see you next time. Bye.